Now, it seems unlikely as I drive through this beautiful Surrey woodland, but I'm about to enter the most testosterone fueled environment in the world. Formula One racing. To build cars, you need a factory. And we all know what factories look like. Frightening, smoky, dark, satanic places, usually in the Midlands. Well, think again. The British invented factories back in the 18th century, and we've built some pretty impressive ones since Arkwright started doing his stuff. But this one must rank as one of the most beautiful factories ever built. This is the McLaren Technology Center. As you can see, it's a spectacular building. I don't think we're doing it justice today because it's a really murky, overcast day. It's just started to rain. It probably looks a bit bleak here, a bit alien to me, a bit sort of space age, but alien, though I am assured there is a human heart in there beating away. It's a bit Thunderbirds-like, actually. You almost expect Thunderbird 2 to come out of the lake, though they actually don't do anything as useful as International Rescue here. They don't save the world from rogue psychopaths in little states in South America. They just make racing cars. But interesting enough, this was ranked fourth by the general public. Fourth favourite building by the public who've never seen it. Isn't that amazing? They've never seen it because they can't. This factory has been deliberately hidden from view. Why? Because these days when you tell the local council that you want to build a dark satanic mill on the third field from the left, they get a bit uppity. They like the idea of the jobs, but they don't want you to spoil the view, such as it is. So McLaren were told they could have their factory so long as no one could see it over the hedges. The result is one of the most graceful, flat, modern buildings in Britain. It's just a shame none of the locals can see it. The man responsible is Ron Dennis, McLaren's chief executive. You get this quite surreal situation where you emerge oh, wow. and you're absolutely faced by this tremendous view. We've won many, many awards for the building, and, uh, and probably the first award which actually put a smile on our face was when the French awarded it as the, uh, gave it the uh, automotive architectural statement of the year. And of course the France that gave us Renault, whom you'll have heard of. Oh yes, <laughs> vaguely. <laughs> now Ron, can I ask you, are you attracting sort of creative people in here, be just because of the building and the space? Well, well I think so. I mean, uh, I say to them, you know, we're going to make this place so great you don't want to go home. What is truly amazing about this building is it's not just office space. Formula One cars are actually designed and built here. Isn't that right, Chris? That's right. Yeah. Well, this is ready by Tuesday. Once Chris has built my car of the future, I imagine he'll bring it here to the wind tunnel to check that it's as aerodynamic as I am. Now, I'm not going to tell you how long this is or how much the steel weighs because I can't remember. But this, the wind tunnel, is the most important tool in Formula One engineering. We can't actually film inside it because McLaren are very sensitive about their racing secrets. But I've seen them, so if you want to know, just give us a call after the show. Like my lovely assistant Claire, this building isn't just pretty, it's clever. The wind tunnel needs 6,000 litres of cold water every minute to cool the thing down, and the builders have found an elegant, economical way to do it. They use the water from this lake to cool down the turbines that drive the wind tunnel. The water goes into the system and is used in the air conditioning as well. And then it comes back into the system quite hot at the top of this cascade. Now the water is recooled by trickling down that cascade. It goes back into the lake warm. Actually, there are carp in this lake, and carp can withstand quite big variations in temperature. Obviously, if the water goes in too hot, <laughs> the carp explode. Even Ron Dennis couldn't build a place like this on his own, so being Ron, he brought in some of the best architects in the world, the British firm of Foster and Partners. David Nelson was the partner in charge. It's probably a compliment to you and Foster's and, and Ron that you forget it's a manufacturing centre, don't you? I mean, yeah. I, this is a car factory. It's a car factory. And, and this is like no car factory you could yeah. ever imagine, isn't it? Well, Ron had a very clear idea of, of what the, the ambitions for the building should be. He really spent a huge amount of time thinking about the project. Mm. And uh, that's, that's rare. Yeah. It sounds an unusual thing to say, but it's a very unusual thing to say. No, well, I'm, we, I said we're, now, we're here to talk about the building, but we're talking about Ron instead. But in fact, in many ways, he was, he was very mm. hands-on, wasn't he, right from the beginning? Very yeah. I think 
we, um, well, we stopped counting after our 200th meeting. It became a bit academic. And we used to meet every two weeks. And uh, they're about five, six, seven hours long each time. British architecture has a different character to French, say, or Italian. We don't mind our buildings looking pretty, but we like them to work. For all the fancy architects, the McLaren factory remains essentially an engineer's building. As with, say, the Lloyds building in London, much of the industrial inner workings of this factory are proudly out on display, much to the delight of Ron. If you look up above your head here, you can just see the efforts that we went to to actually make sure that all the mechanical and engineering services actually formed a bit of an architectural statement in themselves. Ron wanted engineering as art, and this factory does it. We tried to impress on everybody that was involved that there was a strong desire for attention to detail. And uh, that sort of ended up in companies such as uh, the supply of this autoclave actually caring about the alignment. And you can see all the alignment and the neatness and of how that's that done. Is, yeah. you know, that, that's a good that, looking machine. Yeah, and not only that, but it's also, you know, it makes you proud to be English. And yeah. there's a lot of, uh, a lot of the people are very quick to knock England as not having you know, uh, an, either an attention to detail or, more importantly, seeking perfection. It's easy to get confused these days. Our art galleries look like old factories, and our new factories look like art galleries. But it's also a sad sign of the times that instead of showing off our building achievements, planners want to hide buildings like this from view, because this is one truly fantastic piece of industrial architecture. People come here and the best expression that I really like to hear is we actually get it now. You know, some people thought I was complete barking mad to embark on this project. Some of some of my colleagues thought I was barking mad. You know, because it was a phenomenal investment. Just how big an investment has never been revealed. But it's rumoured you could buy 1,000 of his £300,000 Mercedes McLaren SLRs for the same price. 